Hey guys, and welcome to something that is new for Marketing in the Madness. So these episodes are coming to you in collaboration with Madfest. As part of that collaboration, I am going to be interviewing some incredible female leaders, female founders, and men across the industry who are leading the charge and leading the change in our industry that will enable women to reach their full potential and address the long-standing inequalities that still exist, not just in the marketing industry, but across every single industry. So if you're interested in joining me and helping make the world a fairer, more inclusive place, then keep listening because today's episode is going to be a cracker. So I am here with the fantastic Fabrice. Now, Fabrice, because I'm rubbish, I always get people's job titles wrong. I'm just going to ask you to tell us where you are today and your job title. Um, Director of Design and Development at Selfridges. Amazing. But has worked at some of my favorite retail businesses throughout his career. So from Sainsbury's to Matches. I didn't, I actually should have done my research better because, oh my gosh, Matches, amazing. Now TV. I mean, you've just had a fantastic career in, you. you know, well, predominantly, I guess, the world of retail, but also a lot in fashion, which I absolutely love. So... Obviously, I mean, the world of fashion is a, is a funny one as a whole. Um, you know, we think it's quite female dominated. Is that true? In like, in, as a as a kind of outsider, I would go, oh, fashion. There's a lot more women that work in fashion. Is that is that how it's been for you? I think so. I th- I think again, it's difficult, right? Because when you look at when you look at data on these kinds of things, I think it it you kind of have to ask the next question. So it's like, because I do a lot of work also to think about diversity, uh, in a, I guess in a broader sense, you know, also around, I guess, ethnicity and, and um, you know, the, the kind of profile. So that diversity of whether it's more females or, or more ethnic people, right, in, in a retailer. And I think in a lot of businesses, you could easily look at the stats of the, your employee and out of your HR systems and think, yes, you know, we're, we're hitting those goals. But then I think you need to start to look at where in the organization are these roles, right? So um, what I've certainly seen in a lot of fashion retail is quite a very a significant presence of females at quite senior levels. So I think that's important. So I'd say from that perspective, yes. Um, when I start to think more about minority groups, I think that's where what I've again seen is, yes, there is good diversity in a lot of retailers, but it tends to not necessarily be at the top. And that is where I think, you know, there is still some some work to do. Other retailers outside of fashion, I think definitely um, the male-female split, not as favorable, I think, to, to, to females still. And again, you know, I think there's a lot, a lot more that can be done to make sure that um, those, and again, I, I don't want to sound like I'm just stressing the importance of seniority, but I think you've got to have role models, right, in those senior positions. Otherwise, it doesn't really encourage that next generation to, you know, help make those better numbers eventually and help truly create sort of diverse work environments. So I think it's it's really important that organizations kind of think about it top down in a way. Love that. And you know what? Something that we've not spoken about before and is so obvious when you think about it, like, you know, you can very easily, businesses can very easily make it look like, you know, whether it's, you know, ethnicity or you know the female male ratios look like the workplace is much more balanced than it is because maybe they've got lots more female staff in store you know and not exactly. in the leadership and not and not on the board so they can you know flip their figures to make it look like it's good on paper but the reality is there is still a lot of work to be done to get you know women and more you know more ethnic diversity in the boards that we see at these businesses and in those senior leadership style roles um having worked at some brilliant retailers are there and you don't have to call out who they're for but have there, have you seen any great policies or things that businesses are doing kind of top down to help help create that diversity yeah i've i've been lucky enough to to have been part of some of these initiatives so i mean one of the things again like this is a a weird one to sort of talk talk about but it is a, a genuine conversation i've had in a couple of places now where i think sometimes with your recruitment teams it's really important to have the conversation around 
I think especially, again, I'm coming at this from a, you know, I've spent my career in product development, technology, UX. And I think, again, even within those disciplines, you see a real different split of male, female and minorities, you know, so product management tends to have more females than engineering, right? And that's just seems to be, um, unfortunately, the way these things sort of play out at the moment. But I think there's a couple of things. So I remember working with a couple of recruitment teams now in different businesses where we looked at the language we were using in our job specs and in our adverts and in anything we were doing on LinkedIn, how we were posting about those roles, because we had found that especially, and this is terrible, right? Given what I just said before, but especially the more senior roles, you don't realize you're doing it, but I think sometimes you're using words to describe those roles that are either gonna put off a female candidate or put off potentially a, a, someone from, from you know, a diverse background. So it's, I think again, it's like a small thing, but go and look at how you're describing these things, how you're describing your organization to make sure that it's as inclusive as possible. And you're sort of, you're not closing the door right away at that, at that point. Cause I think again, you know, there's different behaviors aren't there that I think there's a lot of studies on this, but I think the way a female candidate approaches a role and the way a male candidate approaches a role or, you know, and again, I don't know how much of this is fully documented or hearsay, but, you know, apparently I think male candidates are more likely to apply for a role even there if they're sort of 60% meet the spec. Whereas I think a lot of female candidates tend to take the spec much more to heart and sort of look for, you know, um, I remember having this conversation about even when we used to put like how many years experience we expected someone to have. And we had seen some research that said, actually, if you put like eight years experience, you know, male candidates who have four years experience will chance it, but female candidates are less likely to apply because they'll say, oh no, I need eight years experience. So even that little tweak to be a little more descriptive about that or changing how you describe it, I've seen a huge improvement. And just like some of the people who've worked for me over the years, when I was asking them when we were filling a position where I'd, I'd suddenly see a much better mix of people applying for that, whether it was, you know, more female candidates, more people from diverse, you know, m minority backgrounds. So I think things like that are really, really important. One other thing I'd mention is for us in technology, there's some really good, um, sort of communities out there now that are starting to position themselves in this way. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happen uh, in terms of like women in tech and within different organizations, you know, um, I've been lucky enough to work with female leaders who've kind of been big representatives for that and will go to talks and, and whatever, right? And make sure that they're kind of um, inspiring people to, to think about technology um, from that perspective. Um, also, um, more recently, I've worked with associations called um, Black Girls Who Code, for example, and again, will encourage you to kind of go and find your engineering teams through their, you know, portfolio of candidates who, you know, come from diverse backgrounds and are engineers. So I think there's some really interesting things like that, that we can increasingly do to just help drive more diversity in our businesses. Those, those two tips are some of the best that I think I've had on the podcast. So simple and so easy, so easy to action. You're, you're totally right. I think the stats officially are quite a lot worse in terms of the job application process. That is something like 20 or 30%. You know, men will often, not all, <laughs> but you know, often they will only need 20 or 30% of the skills, whereas you know, a woman might wait to have 80 or 90% of them. So just thinking about not saying, five years experience, you know, you're open to like being more open so that you attract more diverse applications. Like that's so simple. I'm like thinking I'm going to go and rewrite all of our job ads. Like such a simple change can make such a huge difference. I absolutely love that. Fabrice, I want to talk to you so much more about this, <laughs> but this is only a short little clip. Um, I love that. I may invite you on some other things to come and talk to me about no that. No problem. Um, sure. But thank you so much for joining. My pleasure. Um, yeah, guys, you don't need any more than that. That tip is the killer. Um, thank you so much for joining. And yeah, I will see you very soon. Thank you.